Hello there. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Colleen Klimczak, organizational coach and certified professional organizer. I own Peace of Mind Professional Organizing, LLC. Since 2003, I've been helping my clients live better lives through organizing and organizational and productivity coaching. In addition to organizing and coaching, I support my clients with a weekly newsletter, a weekly accountability and productivity session through professional speaking, blogging, and podcasting. Want to finish strong with me this week? Join me for Finish Line Friday every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central for a two-hour productivity session. Drop me an email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or follow the Zoom Room link on my Instagram or Facebook pages. Today we are recording episode number 50. Now, it's kind of 49 because the first one was, hey, this is a podcast, but you know, I, I'm still calling this one episode 50. And that means we're coming up on the one year anniversary of launching this podcast. So thanks so much for being on this journey with me. When I started writing my content for today, I had just listened to my amazing friend, Sarah Goggin Young with Power to Believe. And she does this really cool thing every Tuesday morning called Vibe High. When I was listening to Vibe High, I was taking my morning walk. And she is just super motivating. And her topic was filling our cup. As in, how do we support ourselves, right? How do we boost ourselves up? How do we fill our cup, metaphorically speaking? And I got to say, time is weird. So I always record my podcast a week ahead. I record an episode on Monday, and then the next morning, on Tuesday morning, the episode I recorded the week before drops. It's very strange. So last week, I talked about ADHD, and I have loved hearing from some of you about how that article and episode impacted you. So thank you. And this week's topic is arriving on time in five-minute increments. And so I've been talking a lot about habits around leaving and also habits around arriving home and habits around packing our bag the day before and things like that. So we can absolutely conquer our transitions in little bits of time. And we should. Transitions, I mean, getting our transitions down to a science can help us at every moment of our day. And so we need to remember that we don't have to make huge, big, grand gestures to make a difference in how smoothly our day runs. So honestly, it's better off if it's not big, huge, grand gestures. We are much better off with small, consistent, intentional, positive efforts. And all of those thoughts and also recent client conversations got me thinking about this habit that I have. This brief and impactful habit that I have that I might not have talked about before. I find it very helpful, and so I thought I would share. It helps me manage my transitions. And again, getting good at managing transitions makes everything better. And it definitely helps me fill my cup. It helps me support being my best self. So here goes. There is a post-it note that I stare at when I sit down at my desk, which I do all the time. I mean the sitting down at my desk part. And the title says, Homing. So there's a song that we sing at Mass. Um, Did you know I'm a liturgical musician in addition to being a certified professional organizer and organizational coach? So there's a song we sing that's called Lord of All Hopefulness. It's lovely. It's a prayer that you'd sing throughout the day. And there's four verses. Be there at our waking, be there at our labors, be there at our homing, and be there at our sleeping. And so when I put homing at the top of that post-it note, it's about when I arrive home. And for me, that's a very comforting image. I always think of the song, so be there at our homing. And that coming home at the end of the day, after our work is done, is completion and satisfaction, right? So I'm, I'm a good tired at the end of the day. I did the work and I'm home now and now I can rest and relax and reset. And so that is the homing list for me. So what's on that homing post-it note? It's a list in order, water, playlist, snack or a meal, nature break, shower, change clothes, next event, transition bags and stuff, bookkeeping, and then curtains, lights, and mail, which are all the same line. Pretty, pretty short. To be honest, most of it takes about 20 minutes total 
um, if I have to do all the steps, which I don't always have to do the steps. So those are the things that I need to do when I get home to take care of me, to ease my transitions, to fill my cup after a busy day or before a busy evening. And this homing list has a special place, the post-it note in front of my face, because I need to remind myself to start with self-care or self-management or self-regulation first before I can help anybody else with their day. So let's break it down. Water, right? Fundamental, necessary for survival. I am almost always dehydrated. And here's a clue. So are you. (laughs) Sorry. But uh, honestly, I just have a hard time staying on top of my water consumption as I should. So the first thing I do often when I get home from, I don't know, being out and about at work or a meeting or the football game over the weekend, you know, all those things as we travel, I usually come home and I have a great big glass of water because I need one. Next up, I turn on some music. I love music. So that's the playlist, right? That's the playlist task. I love music and the right playlist can relax or entertain or energize me. I have playlists from bands we follow or become friends with, uh, and those just make me happy. I love to listen to Motown while I cook. I don't know why, but it makes me happy. So if you have something like that that can fill your cup, by all means, embrace it. Next up, I need to ask the question, do I need to eat? I know that seems kind of crazy that I would need a reminder to ask myself, uh, but I do, right? And so... Very often, I do need a snack when I get home, and if I don't remember to ask the question, it could be a little bit of time before I'm aware that my energy is lagging, or my focus is drifting, or that my blood sugar has bottomed out, and now I'm hangry. And yes, hangry is a thing. Or if I got home around dinner time, I probably need to start applying heat to food in my kitchen. Next up is a nature break. And again, that seems really obvious. And that means, you know, it's a delicate way of saying I needed the washroom. But like, honestly, sometimes I forget and I get distracted. And so, hey, it's on the list. Next up is the question, do I need a shower? Because sometimes I get grubby at work. Um, And that really revved up during pandemic. Uh, During pandemic, I would come home and shower immediately after I got home from working to keep my family safe. Um, And some days it still needs to happen, maybe at the end of one session, but also because I'm getting geared up to go do something else, right? So it's a question I can ask. And sometimes, most times the answer is no, but it's still a good question to ask. I almost always need to change my clothes into comfy clothes. Same idea as the showering, but um, I don't really wear outdoor clothes in my house and vice versa. So, you know, that's just me. And again, that supports me. That's what we're asking here. And next on the list is asking, what's my next event? Now, that question is something that loops back to what I've been mentioning last week and in the past few months about getting our stuff and ourself ready to go. So as soon as I come home from one thing, is it unpacking from the current day or packing up for the next? Or maybe both, to be honest. And so when I ask the question, next event... I'm answering the question and then transitioning my bags and stuff. Again, I've talked about that recently, but if I didn't maintain that process every day when I got home, I would have bags all over my office floor and that would drive me crazy. Next up is the question of bookkeeping. So a reminder to yourself, to myself, I am running a company here. So bookkeeping is not necessarily something that everybody needs to do, but I as a business owner need to do it. And so very often when I get home, I need my clients to pay me. I like getting paid, paid is nice. So I have some clients who pay me in cash. I have some clients who pay me in check or credit card on the spot. I have some people that I send invoices to via Venmo or PayPal. And so because I have all those different options, sometimes I wait until I get home to send that information out. And so That's one of those tasks that I like to complete every day. If I do it every day, it takes five minutes, maybe, but it's very important. Again, I like getting paid, so it's very important that I stay on top of that um, to make it as easy as possible for people to pay me for my services. So, um, you know, I just subbed at a new parish over the weekend, and when I got home from doing that, I had to check in and see, you know, find the email address for their business manager and, and, and send them a note Yep, that's called bookkeeping too, right? 
It also gives me an opportunity to file my paperwork that I accumulated through the day, put away any receipts, make notes on hours with my spreadsheet, etc. It doesn't usually take too long, but it's a very important part of my process. And then the final step is curtains, lights, and mail. So let me explain. Depending on the time of day when I arrive home and the season and all that stuff, uh, sometimes it's still broad daylight when I get home and sometimes it's earlier in the day, right? But it's getting colder out, it's getting darker out, and sometimes it's five or six o'clock at night. And then it means it's time for me to draw close the curtains, turn on the lights in my home, and that makes it feel very warm and friendly. And I also take a moment to grab the mail or any packages because I don't want those sitting outside, right? So if I get home early, I don't necessarily need to do those things. But otherwise, at the end of the day, it's a very nice routine or ritual, whatever you'd like to call it, to kind of, you know, cozy up the house, turn on some soft lights, uh, close up the curtains against the darkness or the cold, and kind of turn my focus towards home and inwards and towards myself, okay? So it makes everything just feel very warm and inviting. And again, we're talking about filling your cup here. So it makes me happy, gives me a little boost. It feels like a hug to me. Who wouldn't want that, right? So going through all of these steps, you know, I could have chosen to set this reminder in some ways, like an alarm on my phone, but I get home at a slightly different time every day. And some days I don't need to do every step that's on the homing list. So I don't necessarily have to go through every step every time. Maybe I don't need a nature break. Maybe I don't need a shower. Maybe I don't need a snack. All of those kinds of things. But having that post-it note in front of me that gives me the opportunity to take a minute, drink my glass of water, look at that list, and decide what I do and do not need to do with the next 15 minutes of my day helps me to know what I need to do for the rest of my day and even into tomorrow. So what is it for you that helps you fill your cup? This was just a very specific example and I wanted to share, but there could be all sorts of things that help you fill your cup that gives you a boost consistently, right? We said small, consistent, positive habits that help us to keep supporting ourselves to do whatever it is that we want to get done. So when I was listening to that uh, vibe high with my friend last week, there were other people that were on there that were commenting about what they do to fill their cup. There were some people on there that were creative with their hands. There were some chefs on uh, on the call. There were some um, hairdressers and stylists. There were some people who create with their hands and, and they made sure that To fill their cup, they made sure to do creative things regularly. Okay, great, right? So what is it for you? And for me, having this visual reminder for me absolutely helps me to maintain that system to do it more consistently. Maybe it's a timer. Maybe it's a, you know, question that you want to ask yourself too. And whatever it is for you, figuring out for yourself and making sure that you do that regularly, consistently, maybe daily is going to help you every other time of the day. So the question for this week is, what supports you? What is it that you need to do to fill your cup on a consistent basis? And I'm not talking big strokes. I mean little, small efforts and gestures throughout the day that help you to fill your cup and support yourself in whatever it is you want to accomplish today. If you'd like to explore topics like this and coaching for organizing and productivity, drop me a line via email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or message me through any of my social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram. Thanks so much, and I will talk to you next week.